when we are doing mathematics, we actually encounter many kinds of nested radicals, which means the radicals inside the radicals. And naturally, many of them cannot be denested, that is, many of them cannot be reduced to fewer radicals. However, there are also many special cases of nested radicals that can be denested. In this video, I will explain one of such special cases, and that is the nested radical in the form of this. Square root of a plus b plus 2 times the square root of ab, square root of a plus b minus 2 times the square root of ab. What is so special about these nested radicals is that we can apply the famous factorization formula to them, namely the square formula. In our nested radicals, we can think of them with square root of a being x and square root of b being y. Then for the first one, a can be written as square root of a square, b can be written as square root of b square, and the remaining part can be written as 2 times square root of a times square root of b. And by our square formula, this is simply square root of a plus square root of b square. So we can basically cancel this 2 with this square root sign to obtain square root of a plus square root of b. And the principle similarly applies to the one with the negative sign. But in this case, we must be careful with the sign of the square root of a minus square root of b when removing the square exponent and the square root, because this entire term must always be non-negative. So therefore, for our denested expression like this, we must use the expression that gives the non-negative value. This can be summarized as the general basic property a square root of x square is absolute value of x, so it can be always non-negative. So here we have to write absolute value of a minus b. Uh, so this is simply square root of a minus square root of b if a is greater than b, but square root of b minus square root of a if b is greater than a. Alright, so the principle is quite simple, but how does this apply to the real problem with actual numbers? Here, let us take a look at four problems which use this method. So hopefully you get familiar with this method. Our first exercise is denesting square root of 11 plus 2 times square root of 18. Here, let us compare with this formula. So we must find the two numbers a and b whose sum is 11 and whose product is 18. Now note that uh, 9 plus 2 equals 11, and 9 times 2 equals 18. So therefore, two numbers are a equals 9 and b equals 2, which means that this is 9 plus 2 plus 2 times square root of 9 times 2 which is square root of 9 plus square root of 2 square. So if you remove the square root sign, we have square root of 9 plus square root of 2, which is simply 3 plus square root of 2. Right, so this was the simple one. Now let us take a look at this problem. Now since we have a negative sign here, we use this formula. Now which two numbers gives the sum 10 and the product 21? Well, you can see that 3 plus 7 equals 10, and 3 times 7 equals 21. So we can let a equals 3, and b equals 7. Then, we have square root of 3 minus square root of 7 squared. But here we must be careful, because the square root of something is always non-negative, or we must use the expression that gives non-negative value. Therefore, we must not write square root of 3 minus square root of 7 since it is negative, but we have to write square root of 7 minus square root of 3, which is the absolute value of square root of 3 minus square root of 7. So this is our answer, and as you can see, in order to avoid this kind of mistake, uh, it is kind of a good practice to uh, write the uh, bigger number first. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Square root of 7 minus 4 square root of 3. Here we must change this expression a little bit so that the number 2 appears in front of the inner radical sign. So here 4 is 2 times 2 and actually let's move this 2 inside the inner radical sign. Then we have 
7 minus 2 square root of 2 square times 3. Oh, you know, because of this property of square root. So now we have 7 minus 2 times the square root of 12. And then we can apply our method. So 7 is 4 plus 3 and 12 is 4 times 3. So it is equal to square root of 4 minus square root of 3 squared, which gives square root of 4 minus square root of 3, which is 2 minus square root of 3. All right, so we have solved the third one, and let's move on to the last one. Okay, we have square root of 3 plus square root of 5. So here, we cannot extract 2 in front of the inner radical. So therefore, in order to create 2, we write the entire radicand in the form of a fraction with denominator 2. Then we have, at the numerator, 6 plus 2 times square root of 5. So now we have 2 here. So let us write square root of 6 plus 2 square root of 5 over square root of 2. And at the numerator, we can apply our method. So you can see that 6 is 5 plus 1, and 5 is 5 times 1. So we have square root of 5 plus square root of 1 over square root of 2. So square root of 5 plus 1 over square root of 2. And if we rationalize the denominator you know, by multiplying square root of 2 at both numerator and denominator, we have square root of 10 plus square root of 2 over 2. And this is our answer. And that was all the exercises I prepared in this video. So like I said, this method only works for the special cases of this or this. And there is also another catch. This method heavily relies on your ability of guessing. That is, or your ability to correctly guess the two numbers A and B. However, this guessing process uh, gets very fast when you get used to it. So I still think that this is one of the cool tricks to quickly denest some of the nested radicals and therefore worth remembering. If you find this video useful, uh, please give it a like and also consider subscribing for my channel to get notified for many new incoming math problems. Thank you for watching and I will see you in another video.